Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to attempt to forge a cheetah pattern Damascus blade. To do this project, I'm going to start with a piece of 3 16 inch thick 1084 high carbon steel. And the first thing we need to do is drill a series of random holes in this piece of steel. So this is actually a little oversized, but that's okay. We can uh, fix the thickness after a bit. So let's take this to the drill press. Does that look like a cheetah? Sort of, maybe. Okay, so we've got a series of holes drilled in their piece of steel. The next thing we need to do is make them not round because obviously a cheetah pattern spots are not round like this, so let's uh, fix that. got all these holes cheetified or something except for this one my little carbide bit broke but now we need to go ahead and reduce this thickness to just under 3 16 so probably you know 175 thousandths let's get it done So I've got a couple pieces of mild steel bar stock, half inch thick by inch and a half wide. I've painted one side of each with white spray paint. The titanium dioxide in this spray paint will keep this and this piece of steel from welding to our center core blade steel. The reason for that is once we've forge welded everything that we need to do, these pieces are going to come off a lot easier since they're not going to be forge welded to the centerpiece. And that's really, really helpful. Okay, let's build this pattern. So a little bit of a disclaimer, this is really more of a reverse cheetah pattern since the colors are going to be sort of backwards and, you know, the background is going to be dark and the inside spot's going to be dark and the ring around the inside spot's going to be light, which is backwards, but I don't really have the materials to do it the right way. So we'll just pretend it's like a negative, uh, you know, photo, whatever, you know, like the old photo stuff, whatever. So we're gonna put a uh, 3 16 inch ball bearing in each of these little spots here. And I wanna explain something for your benefit uh, about this whole method of making pattern welded steel. Now when you squish a sphere, it, if it gives to the pressure, it uh, invariably exerts um, lateral pressure as, as the sphere uh, distorts or deforms in a vertical manner, if that makes sense. So you squish a rubber ball and it bulges out on the sides. That's a much simpler way to say it. When these ball bearings are at a forging heat and we're squishing them, the same exact thing happens. Now why is that important? Well that's very important because that provides lateral forging pressure in this pattern here to uh, affect a good forge weld. I've done this same thing with a series of ball bearings just laid out in a grid and because of that lateral pressure when you're crushing that sphere you uh, all you have to do is smash this down flat. You know, put a couple of good welding heats on it and smash it down in the press, or you could even do it with a hammer. And that's why you can affect a good forge weld using ball bearings in this manner when you can't do that with uh, other, other similar ideas. I tried the uh, zebra pattern Damascus where I just had lines in the in the steel filled with powdered steel for the uh, 
striped effect and there's no way to exert lateral pressure during the forging process except for you know squishing it from the ends which is you know kind of hard to do on a thin piece of steel it doesn't really work so go ahead and fill these up with uh, powdered steel and this powdered steel is 1080 high carbon steel with 4% pure nickel powder added. That 4% nickel powder is what's going to give us a bright contrast to this rest of the steel. Okay, now comes the tricky part. You need to be able to put this on top of here and clamp it without disturbing this center piece. So, take these clamps off. Threw a bead around here, it looks pretty crummy because it is. It doesn't have to be anything special, it's just to hold everything together and keep the air out for the most part. And you actually do not want this whole thing airtight because then it can blow up. But I will point out that having this half inch thick stock on either side of this 3 16 inch center piece is actually helpful in another way, and that is uh, retaining the heat. So, you know, as you know, if you've done much forging, a, a thin piece is going to cool off very quickly. And you know, getting it up to welding temperature and, and holding it there while you get it over to the anvil or the press or whatever, you know, it's going to cool down very quickly. So you're going to run the risk of not actually having a forging heat, or excuse me, a welding heat when you're actually trying to do your forge weld. So having these thick pieces on either side is going to take care of that issue altogether. They probably don't even need to be this thick, but they're certainly going to hold that heat so we can make sure to get a, get a, for, get a good forge weld in the center there. This is ready to go. We've got a little handle stuck to it and we can go ahead and put it in the forge. All right, so I had to grind down to some clean steel. You can see I still have a uh, scale here and down pretty thin, almost about 3.30 seconds. That's gonna be a little tough to complete a knife out of this now, I think, I'm not sure, but I know what I did wrong. I should have left this uh, right at 3 16 instead of going below the depth of the ball bearings a little bit. That kind of uh, came back to bite me because I lost my powdered steel in a couple of spots here and because that those two outer pieces of steel were not sandwiching close enough to this middle section so that was kind of a bummer but we need to go ahead and uh, see what the pattern looks like so we'll put it in the ferric chloride and check it out. Alright guys pulled it out of the ferric chloride and 
it doesn't really look like it cheated to me. I think uh, the main problem is the center spots are too round. They're perfectly round, which of course is what you're going to get with a ball bearing. So I guess uh, if you could take the time to maybe grind those and make them not round, I don't know, that might enhance the pattern. But overall, I think the idea has merit. You could uh, do some stuff with it, and it's kind of a neat pattern by itself anyway. All right, guys, well, not quite what I wanted to create, but I think that idea has merit, and there's a bunch of different things you could probably do with it. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching as always, and we will see you on the next video.